Vitaichi Fsisse! Welcome everybody to the first episode in 2020, which will be covering MFM drives, IDE drives, EIDE drives, all sorts of drives. There will be SSD type drives also, a big comparison. I'm uh, going to be formatting them and checking out how fast they were. It's just a you know, grand old comparison. So, first thing we need to do is get up and get some parts. So, let's get some parts. Alright, let me just go inside here and see if I can find myself. An ID hard drive, 80 megs. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, I think this one. Yeah, this one's got an 80 meg hard drive in there. All right, so I'll be pulling that out of there. And now let's meet the contestants on Wheel of Hard Drive. From 1981, we have this Seagate ST412 Type 1 drive. It was originally used in the PCXT. It is the second MFM hard drive ever created with a capacity of 10 megabytes and it spins at 3600 RPM. And contestant number two from 1991 is this Maxter 7080AT drive with an 80 meg capacity. It is an IDE drive, 32K of cache, and it spins at 3600 RPM. Contestant number three from 1995 is this Western Digital Caviar 2850. It is an 850 megabyte drive, EIDE, 64K cache, and it spins at 4500 RPM. And contestant number four is inside the machine because it's really hard to take it out, the drive gets hot and the power plug is slightly damaged so I just left it in the machine uh, in any case it is from 2002 it is an IBM UltraStar 18.4 gig drive uh, using SCSI 2 interface it has 4 megs of cache and it spins at a very loud 15,000 RPM and contestant number 5 is this compact flash card I'm not sure what year it was made in uh, it has 512 meg capacity 100x speed rating and we'll be connecting it through this IDE adapter And contestant 6 is a SCSI to SD adapter. I bought this in uh, 2017. This has an 8 gig micro SD card with a 2 gig partition on it, and we'll be connecting it by the 50 pin SCSI cable. Contestant number 7 is an EDC 2000. I'm not sure of the date I purchased it used off of eBay. It has a 512 megabyte capacity using SLC memory, so one bit per cell, and it uses the IDE interface. So the test system is a 233MMX with a PC chips M535 mainboard. It has integrated IDE, which we'll be using for most of the tests, and obviously disabling it for MFM and SCSI systems. MFM drives require a special controller card. Uh, by doing a low-level format, you pair the card with the hard drive. If you change the hard drive type or the interface card type, you have to re-low-level format it. There are two cables. One is for data, the smaller one, and one is for signaling control, the larger one. So the MFM drive had to be reconfigured a whole bunch of times, and BIOS settings were changed. I'll show that later, but for now, Let's do F disk. So some success was had with DRDOS 6. I made a partition, it actually took it, but I had to use 46 board. So I'm gonna try to make this format this and put it back onto the Pentium. So we've rebooted it in with the 486, and you can see there's 10 megs of Total hard drive space and 8.2 are left. Um, that's good. It booted on its own. No bad sector still. Now, Pentium. Okay, sweet. It's back into the Pentium. You can see the 486 board is just lying over there disconnected. And we have a prompt. So let the testing begin. Okay, first round. 
It's worse than a Seagate SD251, which is a newer drive, so that would make sense. And core test now. And PC config now. Before we say goodbye to the MFM drive, I'm just going to use these debug commands to park the heads properly. I don't know if this BIOS actually will park the heads in the landing zone. And I'm putting it away for a while, so it's it should be done. And there's the command. And success, the stepper motor has moved the heads to cylinder 305. Now we're going to be moving on to IDE drives. These are drives were introduced in 1986. They have a 40 pin ribbon connection, just one wire, unlike MFM that had two. The biggest step in IDE over MFM was that well, it stands for Integrated Drive Electronics. So the brains are attached to the drive, which means you can switch the drive to other controller cards and other PCs and it'll just pick it up. So that was a major step. Uh, later renovations featured things like cache upgrades, the quicker speeds, quicker standards. So You could also have up to two drives per channel, a master drive and a slave drive. Alright, sysinfo results, core test results, and PC config results. And now we're going to use the Caviar 850 megabyte drive, one of the first ATA2 style drives, and for that we're going to be using the 80 pin ribbon cable. I don't know if this is really going to make a difference on throughput, but it is a newer version, so we'll use this cable. Sysinfo results. Not too bad, not too bad. So just for the hell of it, I remeasured, I redid the benchmark taking out the 80 pin cable, just the standard 40 pin, and the results are virtually identical. So yeah, this this doesn't really come into play until later on late in the in the EIDE uh, game, like late 90s, early 2000s. Core test information. And PC config. SCSI stands for Small Computer Interface System. It was introduced in 1986. It is not limited to hard disks and CD-ROM systems like IDE, but can handle tape backup systems and even scanners. Typically up to seven devices can be connected to one controller, which are identified by a LUN ID. Internal devices are connected using a 50-pin ribbon cable. Performance is greater than that of IDE, and like IDE, it moves data in parallel blocks. And sysinfo was unable to see the SCSI drive, so we're just going to use the other two tests. Now we're going to try out the compact flashcard. So there's the mode 4 CF card. Get to testing. Yeah, no surprise there with sysinfo. Yeah, so I swapped on the 80 pin cable here, and yeah, there's no difference at all. So these these all these systems all predate the later end specifications where they needed the extra ground. And these are the core test results. And PC config. Apparently this uh, Carpi flashcard rotates at 3000 RPM. Awesome. And now the InnoDisk 512 SSD drive, if you will, PADA. Uh, notice there's a master slave switch here. I don't know how you're going to get any kind of master or slave or any secondary drive with this because this kind of just goes right into the motherboard. There's no pass through. So, yeah, optimistic master slave is optimistic. This info for the Inno disk and the core test results. And finally, the PC config results. And now the final test will be the SCSI to SD adapter. So we'll put the SCSI card back into the system and boot it up. Yeah, looks like it picked it up. Awesome. Looks like these are the results for this info. And the core test results. And these are the PC config results. Okay, so to wrap that up, uh, unsurprisingly, the MFM drive was the slowest. 
the ID drives quickly caught up, uh, what with the advent of cache and EID standards, so on, etc. Progress. Uh, I was a little bit surprised about the uh, SCSI 2 SD not performing as well as I thought it would. That could be the limitations of the controller card. I could open up the taps a little bit more and experiment with that. However, still seek time, track to track time, uh, zero. So good. Uh, overall, the experiment was entertaining at the very least and not surprising, you know, if you crunch the data. So the data will be accessible in the link below. Uh, like, dislike, comment, please interact with me. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Lots of cool stuff coming from YAG lasers to exploding things. I don't know yet exactly, but it seems to be a good year and a good start. So, do zobaczenia!